we are going essay writing today and we're going to tackle that big monster today because it's something that everyone struggles with and i'm going to tell you right now nicholas you were saying and you were talking about getting more content content is not going to help you if you do not understand the beauty about literature is that not everybody is going to interpret a text, a poem, a story, uh, a drama the same. That's the beauty of it. Beauty of it. However, of course, what you need to do in your essays, what you definitely need to do, is prove to the examiner, prove to the examiner why you believe and why you interpreted this text this way, giving them evidence to back it up. Right? That is your aim. Your aim is to use the analysis use the content that you are given by your teachers by myself by any online sources we use and make almost like a, not an argument but almost don't make it too argumentative but present a case for why a certain poem has this theme a certain poet uses this alliteration why did he use this alliteration why did he use a simile what was the impact of it how did it make you feel what was the mood what was the tone um, proof and you have to prove it you have to use the techniques used by the author to try and explain to the examiner well this is why try to explain to the examiner your interpretation of why that writer would have put it into the text what was the writer trying to accomplish by using this technique or this literary device you understand I understand so the content alone, the content is good, content is good, but it means nothing if you do not understand what is there. A lot of students, including myself when I was doing it, will go online, look for different analysis, look for different themes, look for different summaries, and all that is great. But if you just regurgitate it, your essays will be, that will be evident in your essays. You have to be really, really understand what you are writing. You have to understand why you are writing it what are you trying to prove what are you trying to show so don't just tell it show it and that's what we're going to go through today so writing essays what you need to know act that's the acronym authors the writer characters the who techniques techniques literary devices the presentation themes the message act that's how you can remember it now why you need to know your authors it's extremely important that you know your authors can't stress this enough you can go online and you can look up the author. First of all, you have to know the author in terms of which author, which person wrote what poem and wrote what and wrote what story or wrote what book. Because knowing when you look at the author, looking up his his or her background, his or uh, when they wrote the book, what setting they wrote the book um, or the story or the poem. Um, in what time setting did they write the storybook or poem? Um, if you have, if you could find any interviews online, what was their mindset when they were writing the book, poem, and stuff like that? That is really important because it gives you, um, you get to see the inspiration between the, behind what you are analyzing, and that can help you to better analyze it, right? And and that's very important. Often, a lot of these analysis you find online. The reason you could say, well, this particular poem is about this particular thing is because of the, the setting, when the author wrote it, all that. So you need to know that. You need to know that. And you utilize um, in the essays, if we're going to the nitty gritty, in the essays, it's good to say in your essay, such an introduction, um, this book or this story or this poem written by this author is blah, 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 blah. And you keep on doing your, your essay. That shows the examiner that you know who wrote it, and that's good. <laughs> you get a little tick for that. If you don't know the author and you don't mention the author throughout your entire essay, that's a bad, that's a red flag. That's a red flag already. So know your authors, know your authors, memorize them, marry them, do whatever you need to do. Know your authors, divorce them after the exam if you need to. Know your authors. <laughs> All right, it's extremely, extremely, extremely important that you know your authors. Um, can y'all give me another reason why you think that you would need to know your author? Do you understand why you need to know your author? Guys? No one? Okay. 
So, your characters, the who. You need to know the role of each character. You, you, you can't just know the main character, know about all about he or her, and be done. You need to know the main, the main characters. You need to know who this main character interacts with. You need to know why they interact with. You need to know the relationship between characters. You need to know where these characters are at a, different, at a specific time. Get to know the characteristic of the character. And because, and the reason I put this here is because CXC often in their CXC questions, in their formatting, a lot of the questions talk about different relationships, um, different um, impacts of different symbols and techniques and, and different characters and other characters. So it's very, very important. No matter how, min how minor the role of the character seems, they may make a huge impact on the main character. A huge impact. Um, look at the story of Barry. Barry was the main character. Dr. Reinfield was another big character, and his maid was another big character. But a little sub, these little any children, but the other sub characters were like the other staff members, right? The other staff members of the home. They were not mentioned a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, but they made an impact. What was their impact? They teased Barry, they overworked him, they, they did all sorts of things to Barry. And even though their names were not mentioned, even though they weren't in the story like all, all the time, all the time, they still made an impact on the main character, right? So you need to know that so that when you are discussing theme, the theme of Barry, which is one of the themes being racism, which is racism, you'll be able to say, well, these characters, these maids did this to Barry based on his race, and the evidence of this is blah, 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 blah. Right, so you need to know all the characters in the story. Don't 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 underestimate the role, because you have a small role but a big impact. Techniques and literary devices, the presentation. Oh, this is so important. If you don't know your techniques, you're begging for a grade two. You're begging CX to give you a grade three or a grade two. You ain't gonna get a grade one if you don't know these. I'm telling you no. You need to know your techniques. You need to know and not just know them like regurgitate them but understand their impact as well. You need to say, you need to know, well, this is what happened to him. Got the techniques, he used foreshadowing. Why? You have to tell the examiner, why did he use foreshadowing? Hmm. Did he use foreshadowing for this purpose? To build suspense? To do what? What was he trying to do with this technique? To better bring along the story or the poem or the, the, the drama? What what why what does this technique, what is this symbolism, what does this simile, what is this alliteration, what is this on appeal, what does this technique do for the poem? It's not just there for any no reason. So why is it there? What impact does it make? So you need to know your techniques. So you don't need just need to know them. You need to understand them. You need to be able to analyze them. You need, in the metaphor and a simile, you need to know what is being compared. But you not only need to know what's being compared, you need to know why it's being compared. For what purpose? So that's important. Themes, the message. Now, themes are sometimes can be really tricky because not everyone agrees on these things. But you have to read the story and you a theme. You have to read the story and think to yourself, what stood out to me? What is the main idea of this story and poem? What what does it what does it really bring forth? What's the message? Right? What is it trying to push, portray? What is it trying to teach me? All those questions you need to ask when you read a story or a poem. Drama is a little different. It's the same thing, but it's a little different. We'll talk about that next week. But we really need to understand, when you identify a theme, you need to be able to show evidence that this theme is there. You can't just say, well, the theme of the boy who loves ice cream is desire. Why? Why is it desire? What, what, what made you think? Desire. What made you think of this when you read this story? What made you think of this theme? So when you're identifying a theme, and a theme does not have to be, it, it, I would recommend it not be one more word like racism, desire. I just use that because it's the easiest thing to come up with at the time. But it's best that you use, uh, for a theme, you use a, you use a, like, a, a phrase, most of them a theme, because a, a more so than a word, because words can be very, very broad. Racism, oppression, those 
one word thing they can be very broad because oppression and racism they could go anywhere you could do anything with that anything anything with that you could do anything with that but when you know when you have a phrase like money can't buy your happiness the effects of racial prejudice the you know different themes that you could use man versus society women in society you have a better understanding of what that story you know is saying that poem is saying any questions hello no. y'all understand yeah so yeah. since you understand what y'all in fifth form so y'all would have analyzed some poems and some stories already but um what you could just give me a poem or a story or a, a book or even the drama even though the and i will tell you no analyzing a drama is very different um it's similar process you need to know the writer you need to know the character you need to know the techniques you need to know the themes but because it's all dialogue um the uh, your approach to analysis has to be different so i will say that right there your approach it's all dialogue you can't put dialogue as a technique for example in in um in a play that's the like, that's like why are you saying that that's so redundant why are you saying that you know so you have to be very you have it's a different approach um but this give me um a story or a poem or a book any book or anything you would have done this last year and tell me the who the writer, the presentation, one presentation, one technique, and a theme. Come on, don't be shy. Anything, anything that is on the syllabus. All right, I'm going to help one. I'm gonna help y'all. Um, go ahead, go ahead. I was just trying to think of one, but goodness, wow. Was that to start? Um, what you call it? T. John's Brothers. Mm -hmm. Um, it was written by Derek Walter, and basically, the main theme is also racism. Racism. Uh -huh. Um. Can you be more specific with your theme? Like what about racism yeah so basically um there's this illusion of the devil being his, the slave master mm -hmm. and he was living on this big on this hill mm -hmm. in a big white mansion mm -hmm. while he let the three brothers do his um work well he let him work on and he promises them so and base and well of the way the brothers do it it's sort of um foreshadows the end because it it's also ironic mm -hmm. irony is a vice mm -hmm. i don't know if you um, brothers so you'll see how well you do when i when i ask her so you're saying what? there is a it's a devil that is portraying the slave matters, slave masters. T. John, T. John and his brothers are like the slaves, and he's this slave master is living his best life basically. And the author, who's the author again? Derek Walker. The Derek Walker is using for you use the technique of foreshadowing and irony in the in the play, correct? Yes. So you gave me the writer. You mm -hmm. gave me the character. You gave me a two techniques. And you gave me, give me a theme. Give me a theme that is a phrase. You gave me racism, but give me a theme that's be something a little bit more specific. Um, good versus evil is a good one. You think so? Yeah, that is one. That um, is a very popular one among analysis and people. I did look it up and and read a little bit to see. 
So good and versus evil is a, yeah. a, a better theme because it gives you an idea. That can be a little broad too, but it captures the story. Even what, even from what you just told me, I could get that theme from there. All right, so good job. Felicia? Yeah? You could give me anything? <laughs> Not really. You can't remember nothing you did from Full Farm in terms of analysis. Well, it's not like that, right? All right. I'm going to help y'all. I'm going to go to Barry. Y'all know Barry? No. All right. So Barry is one of the stories. One of the stories in the syllabus in the world of prose, right? Um, but instead of doing that, we're going to do a poem because the poem is a lot a poem is a lot shorter and easier to I'm go to the beginning. Right. A poem is a lot easier to 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 dig down sorry about that. To dig down into right now. So any poems there y'all know? Oh, I know. Dreaming that boy. Dreaming that boy. Or kids. Mm -hmm. Ghost Rider, but I forgot about it. I, I, know the, I know Ghost Rider, but I forgot about it. Mm -hmm. Like, if that's what I think about, I would, I would know. <laughs> what did you know. I want to do a poem. I want to do a poem y'all don't know. What's a poem y'all don't my know? My birds. Don't know if I'm right I don't know. Uh. I did most of these, but uh, I didn't do. I don't think I have it in mirror. Mirror is yes, a beautiful sir. one. You didn't do mirror either? No. Let me see. Hold on a minute. I want to do one y'all don't know. All right, let's do mirror. I am silver and exact. I have no preconceptions. Whatever I see, I swallow immediately, just as it is, unmissed by love or dislike. I am not cruel, only truthful. The eye of the little god, four-cornered. Most of the time, I meditate on the opposite wall. It is pink, it's speckled. I have looked at it so long. I think it's part of my heart, but it flickers. Faces and darkness separate us over and over. Now I am a lake, a woman bent over me, searching my reaches for what she really is. Then she turns to those liars, the candles of the moon. I see her back and reflect it faithfully. She rewards me with tears and an agitation of hands. I am important to her. She comes and goes. Each morning it is her face that replaces the darkness. In me, she has drowned a young girl, and in me, an old woman, rises towards her day after day like a terrible fish. Now, as y'all would have said, um, the y'all would have said that the tone of this poem is very dismal, and that the mood is very sad and gloomy. But I also think it's kind of reflective <laughs> when you really think about it as well. Um, the mirror kind of reflecting on its role and also reflecting on uh, kind of almost telling the story also of this woman um, from the mirror's perspective and I think that we should really highlight that as well um, I think that for sure this is a very 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 beautiful depiction um, so I'm going to read the first stanza again, and we're going to really break, try and break it down as much as possible, and we're going to try and highlight some of the devices in here, all right? I am silver and exact. I have no preconceptions. Whatever I see, I swallow immediately, just as it is, a miss by love or dislike. I am not cruel, only truthful. The eye of a little god, four-cornered. Most of the time, I meditate on the opposite wall. It's pink with speckles. 
I have looked at it so long. I think it's a part of my heart, but it flickers. Faces and darkness separate us over and over. So come, tell me, what are some devices in this this stanza of slash verse here? Let me know. Um, metaphor. Which line and I'll read it. Which line? Um, sorry, the fifth one. I, the eye of a little God? Yes. Amen. Great. The eye, that is a metaphor. And the reason I'm identifying now is because we're going to write half an essay today. All right. The eye of a little God. That's one metaphor. Excellent. Any other, anything else? There are like two, I think. Mm -hmm. It's been, well, it's all being personified. So the eye of a little God is definitely one. Anything else y'all can identify in here? If you do, if you can't think of anything, just let me know. I can. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, imagery was waiting for that. Yes, imagery for sure. I made it to the opposite um, wall. It's pink with speckles. That's imagery. Yeah. That's a good description. Anything else? And this just in this stanza alone. Let me write this down so that one needs to go on read. Um Ooh. <laughs> so we have, I'm gonna show you what we have already. Metaphor line five and imagery this contrast one oh tell me why well in line four is like it says i am a true only true fool why do you think that's con why do you think that's contrast was it come why why do you think what is it what indicates the comparison well your less is in the same line the put the uh, mirror the poet made the mirror say that um it's not cruel and it only reflects an unbiased uh mm -hmm. and what do you think that the poet reflection. said so what do you think the poet said so what do you mean but you think that that line is there. I am not cruel, only truthful. Because the reason I don't really think it's contrast is because it's more of the perception of the mirror. The mirror shows you what you do. Revolution. Pardon? Like, the mirror shows, like, it brings about the revelation. So, the person that we're looking at. In a way, it's just showing I am not cruel. You know, when you're raw and you just tell people the truth, people get offended. Especially in our society today. People get extremely offended when you tell them what they don't want to hear. So I think why that line is there is to say, even though I'm not trying to be cruel, I'm not trying to be mean, I'm just telling you the truth. So I don't really see that as a contrast. Because I don't see, I don't see like, I don't see it. But, but I'm not going to. Tell you you're wrong, but I don't see. I don't. I just think it is a line to show, to tell the audience that this is the perception of a mirror that is cruel, that is unbiased, that it doesn't show you what you want it to see. It's not cruel, but it's it's not cruel. Sorry, it's just showing the truth, but it's perceived as cruel. It's perceived as telling you what exactly what it is, even when you don't want to hear it or don't want to see it, rather. If you understand what I'm saying, whoever spoke, because I can't see y'all. I understand. Right. I say, okay, part where it got, um, 
It is paint with spatlet. It is paint with spatlet. Spackles. I have looked at it so long. I think it's a part of my heart. You think that relationship is? I think it's a part of my heart that maybe is like the reflection of it was like a part of she. I was like kind of like she on self identity. Part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It could be because, no, and as I said before, when you are looking at something for so long, as it becomes a part of you, becomes a, a characteristic of your everyday life. Let's treat this mirror as a person because being personified, that's literally being personified. So, I, even as a regular person, if you're with someone for so long, think of a family member, your sister, your brother, your mother, your father, your close, close friends. When you're with them all the time and you're looking at them all the time and you're walking around them all the time, they become a part of you. So it's the same thing for this mirror. This mirror sees this wall every single day. Every single day it sees this wall. So you are absolutely correct. So that's one. Now I'm a lake. So now I was saying it's part of a mirror, but sorry, that was a stupid statement. Ignore that. When it's when it says now I'm a lake, when you look in the lake, right? It also reflects, you know, you. Oh well now I'm a lake. A woman bends over me, searching my reaches for what she really is. Then she turns to those liars, the candles or the moon. I see her back and reflect it faithfully. She rewards me with tears and agitation of hands. I am important to her. She comes and goes. Each morning it is her face that replaces the darkness in me. She has drowned a little girl, and in me, an old woman rises towards her day after day like a terrible fish. So, devices, that's just the second stanza slash first. Tell me what devices um, are there. Um, we had a personification in the first line. I am silver and exact. No, I mean, I meant the second, the second, um... I know, but... I was okay. that, but oh, sorry. That. I am so sorry. I know it's like it's not your fault. I am sober and I'm exact. Yeah, see, the whole poem is being personified. So, yeah. Now, the first two. Well, I just read it for y'all. What is. What are some devices that are there? Um, um, the first line. No, I am lit. That wouldn't be, uh. An analogy. Mm hmm In a way, because uh the lake is definitely not a real mirror, like the silver and exact mirror. It's not the lake is not seen as a mirror, but it's being portrayed as a mirror in this case. So in a way, yes. Anything else? Metaphor. Where? Where it says, um, in me, a young girl has died. No, she had drawn the young girl, right? And in me, an old woman raises a torch for day after day, like a terrible fish. That'll be more of a simile because it has a like in it. So when you see a like in it, you know the simile. Well, which part? Because sometimes. <laughs> In me and old woman, yeah. in me and old right, woman you know, is towards her day after day like a terrible. This part of it is going to be simile because it has the light there. When you see light and ash, it's always a simile, always. Yeah, I didn't, but I didn't, I talking. I already thought more about like in me she had to draw the young girl part. Yes, I think y'all missing the point of this line though. In me, she has drowned a young girl, and in me, an old woman rises toward her day after day like a terrible fish. That is, that is a revelation right there about this whole thing. This woman doesn't want to be aging. She fears age. That's why she's looking at it all the time. That's why she's looking to the liars. Because agitation of my hands, of hands, because 
she doesn't like to age she doesn't want to age you know that in women in society women in society they they lose well they don't lose their value but per, per society society degrades women like when they grow old so as the, what do you get the more less not say less of a woman but less valuable in terms of beauty you are so this woman when she looks into this mirror and it shows no just as is and missed by love or dislike it shows her the truth i am getting old i'm getting wrinkles and all these things she doesn't like that she rewards me with tears and agitation of hands right then she turns to the, those liars the candles or the moon why because the candles on the moon they're dark you want to see the shadow you want to see uh, not all the details of your face and your body right so when she looks back into the lake or she looks back into the mirror it's like oh my gosh i look so old and ugly i am important to her why because you are showing her the fact that she's growing the fact that she's aging the fact that she is um getting less and less beautiful she comes and goes and each morning is her face that replaces the darkness faces here in the first time the faces and darkness separates faces and darkness separates her the wall and the mirror over and over you so look at the links what is this woman we see the little clues that this poem is really and and you will get this when you look up when you search the author when you search the author you understand this poem so much more and that's why i'm able to say that because she said that she dreaded she didn't the thought of aging was terrible to her and this was what inspired this poem so like a terrible fish that simile that beautiful simile right there in me she has drowned a young girl so that means that she that means this mirror more than likely these mirrors well these the lake and the mirror or probably something that she grew up with she used to be young and looked in this mirror with pride and joy and beauty and as she got older and older that that mirror in the lake that that image of that young girl drowned in the lake and every day an old woman rises an older and more mature person rises in terms of looks in terms of everything y'all understand y'all understand yes, I'm not crazy, right? <laughs> but we understand. Good. It's good that you understand. Because now, we're going to go back here. And we're going to write. Now. Writing. We're back to this. Writing essays. Oops. I'm supposed to present, yeah. <laughs> writing essays. We're back here. The author. We know the who. Sylvia Plath, characters, the personified mirror, the girl, um, the main two main ones. But a character, I was telling you all again, a character, or not even a character, a thing that had a very big impact in this poem, she turns to those liars. Who are the liars? That's a character. Who are the liars? The candles and the moon. That's a big deal. But it's only mentioned in the poem like two, it's like, that like once. The candles in the moon. When you when you when you look into when you go into a moon or a shadow. When you when you rely on the the, the light of a moon of the moon, on the light of candles. You don't see all the details of your image. You only see shadows and a little bit. You know, you don't see the full details of your face and your body and all that. So when she says she turns to those liars. I see her back and reflect it faithfully. Therefore, these candles and move are not reflecting her front faithfully. Y'all understand? Then she turns back to me and she's like, she rewards me with tears and, and age and an agitation of hands. She crying. She's crying. She's sad that she's getting older and that the, the physical consequences of that. I am important to her. She comes and goes. It's important to her to know what she looks like. It's important to her to feel... To understand that you know, y'all understand what I'm saying so knowing that now give me give me knowing that uh, that we've discussed give me give me let's go back to the themes again because we have some devices we don't need any more there are more in here but we're just gonna focus on this for now give me some more themes now knowing what you know or what we have discussed And 
she turns away from that mirror because she doesn't like what she's seeing. She doesn't like it. Anyways, go ahead. Tell me a, a, a um, there's six, five of you in here. Six of you. Six of you in here. Tell me what, what, what thieves know, now that you are not seeing it from face value, can you identify now? Feminism? Mm, I would more say women in society. Or the, or the perception of women. Because, or, per, or how a, a young girl was, I don't know the, how to phrase it, but how a young girl sees herself. Because, I understand why you said that, but feminism is too, again, too way, way too broad for this. It could be talking about beauty. You guys come up with a theme that talks about beauty as well. Because the, the mirror reflects your beauty, the good, bad, and the ugly. So, <laughs> you could have a thorn that talks about beauty. Um, you could talk about, think of something like that. Give me something along those lines. Uh, like could, a, could a team be like pretty live versus like ugly truth? Yes, I love that. I love that. Who's that as role? Yeah. Amazing. I love it. I love it. We're writing an essay, even though we're class almost done. We're writing an essay. We're going to start. <laughs> this is the format of the essay today. So we have metaphor. Like we have three devices here. We have a theme, pretty lights versus ugly truth. Anything else? Anything, any th other things before we go into the structure of, of an essay? How we're going to structure this essay? Or this analysis? Anybody? All right. So let's say CXC. CXC has two formats for their questions, right? And I can't show it here, but they have a format for poems where they will be like, one option would be discuss two poems that explore desire or explore um, racism or explore some other topic. Then the other option would be giving you the actual poems to compare. Sorry, the actual poems. And they will say, usually they will either tackle, they will either at the center of it will either be the characters or the theme. That's why it's so important that you know your themes and your characters and your authors. Because if you don't know those three, especially you're going, you're asking CSC for two, you're asking them. You need to know them by heart, all right? Um, and you also, another thing I was to tell y'all is that you need to uh, see what two poems go well together. What two poems have similar themes? What two poems have similar um, messages, similar um, character roles, all right? You have to do that because in CXC, you're gonna, either way, you're gonna be asked to do two poems. That's what we're gonna do in technically half a half an essay, technically today, because and y'all y'all would know that, right? So from the top points from this list that I have here. I wish I could go to the beginning, but I can't. Right, from the points list you have here, we are we just did mirror. What other poem here do you think will could be compared or discussed along with mirror? That follows that a similar thing stuff about something about women for sure um orchids i think mm. why tell me why well the main person in orchids was a female yes it was who, a female um their plans was dying because they're moving, mm -hmm. and basically, it come the orchid kind of. Let's go to orchids and let's see. It's death. I'm not gonna say anything, but I'm gonna let's go to orchids and let's see. Orchids. I leave this house. Box pieces of the five wheat life I've gathered. I'll send them on to fill spaces in my future life. One thing is left. A spray of orchids someone gave from a bouquet from a book from a, from a bouquet one who makes a ritual of flower giving scent 
The orchids have no fragrance, but purple petals draw you to look at the purple heart. I watered them once, when the blossoms were full blown like polished poems. I was sure they'd wilt, and I would toss them out with the, with, with the five wheat litter. They were stubborn. I starved them. They would not die. This morning, the butter at the stalks taped and flared. I think I'll pluck the full bloom, blown blooms, press them between pages of memory. Perhaps in their thin, dry transparency, I'll discover their peculiar poetry. So you think that can be compared or discussed along with Mer? Yeah, kind of. That would be interesting. I was not expecting that. And what is the similarities? And there has to be a similarity in theme, relationship. There's got to be some similarity for it to be discussed. So what similarity do you see? Because the woman is not even mentioning her. Oh, you weren't going to use that? Uh-uh. But I, 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 I let you... That was not what I was thinking. <laughs> but it's okay. I, I would like that you brought it up. Because I want to know... I want to see what you see. What do you see in terms of... Come, how do you think C.X. Seeker form a question that links these two poems? Like what are their similarities? What themes? What what? The same way that the lady in orchids left the orchid to die, mm -hmm. it could relate to Mirror mm -hmm. as being the same person, the person drawing the um her young the young girl. Yeah, the young girl. And leaving her to die basically in a way. And then that's a stretch. I understand, but to me, that's a low. How do I go back to the beginning? There needs to be a way to go back to the beginning. Oh, yes, there is. So, I think that's a stretch, but you can ask your teacher about it. Your teacher at school, tower, what? <laughs> To me, that's a little stretch, but I understand. Uh, I only thing I ever see is like how um, the like, beauty kind of like wither the way and some of that mm -hmm. But I don't think it's enough. But like, if it was supposed to set down a right whole thing on it, I don't think like, it was like it would be enough to support it if that makes sense. So. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. I agree. I understand what you're saying. This is Ro that was speaking. This is Ro that was speaking. Oh, um, can I... No, I mean that was speaking before. It was, um... I know it was me. Oh, All right, Nicholas. Was... Okay. So, I understand what you... I kind of understand what you're trying to bring a link, but I, as as... Kiana was saying, I, it's, it's a stretch, it's a stretch, it's a stretch. Stretch me. Anybody else? There's one point in particular. There's one point in particular that will go well with this. Come on, guys. I'm gonna give well, I really do much for these coins here, so I can't really see it. But what it do, it can't really relate to this. What are we doing now? This is the poem I was thinking. A stone's throw. We shouted at, we shouted out. We've got her. Here she is. It's her, all right. We caught her. There she was. A decent looking woman, you have said. They often are. Beautiful, but dead scared. Two sled. We roughed her up. A little. Nothing much. And not the first time by any means. She'd felt men's hands, greedy over her body. But ours were virtuous, of course. And if our fingers bruised her shuddering skin, there were love bites compared to the hail of kisses of stone. The last assault and battery frigid rape to come of right. For justice, just be done. Especially when it tastes so must be done. Sorry, must be done. Especially when it tastes so good. And then this guru, preacher, God merchant, God knows what, sport, the whole thing, speaking to her, 
should never speak should never speak to them, squatting on the ground to her level, writing in the dust, something we couldn't read, and saw in her something we couldn't see, at least until he turned his eyes on us, her eyes on us, our eyes upon ourselves. We walked away, still holding stones that we may throw another day, given the urge. Now, the reason I think this is a good one is that this is another women in society type poem. Mira was talking about a woman's beauty. Well, this is talking about a woman's sexuality and integrity now. When a woman commits adultery, it's not seen as the same way as when a man does. When a man does. So you can discuss how in both of these the both of these poems, how the patriarchy and the double standards of how women are treated in society are displayed. Y'all understand? Y'all could see the connection or am I crazy? Guys? Wait. Um. Um. Uh, it's in, in this one here. Um. Wait. I feel like in this one when it said, um, beautiful, but that's her also We rough her up and it's told nothing much. I feel like this one, it was like, she beauty here. Uh, the beauty of how it is with being like love, so like the beauty of being a woman and stuff like that. Like the value of being a woman. Um, here, um, uh, to she and she and poem in society, um, it wasn't enough for the men to be holy, or to treat she the way in which she deserved it. There was not. Like they devalue it to some extent. Like they didn't. Like, I don't know. Um, they didn't. Like, that's it. Like, treat her like she should. Like, they didn't do like enough justice towards it. And in the other one, like the woman, she didn't really. She saw. She didn't saw her own beauty as enough. She didn't talk her own beauty was enough. Her own beauty was what what she stood in her own skin caused her to feel like to lower her own like self esteem in a sense, which is the same thing here, like um and how she cut up like look she saw in the same way. Um, in the same thing, so at this point, um, I got sad, but it can't, it can't explain it, like, how he's thinking it, but yeah. What I was talking about was basically saying, if a question came that talks about women in society as a theme, that says he actually told you, ex discuss two poems that whose theme is women in society. These two poems will be perfect. Yes, I believe that these two poems perfectly come together and that in terms of their overall message and theme and I think that it's talking about women yes in two different lights but the, the, but for sure I think that these can be discussed together because one poem mirror is talking about a woman's fear of aging a woman's disdain with herself as she ages and how she feels and how she cries in the mirror and how her young self is drowning in the lake and and that really comes from how society views women how society society has groomed women to think that their beauty is it all um beauty always got pain and all these things that we say and we don't even realize it that we participate in and saying that women have to look this way all the time 24 7 but when a woman ages and she starts getting wrinkles and starts to quote unquote lose her beauty, her self image deteriorates as a female. Um, and that's because of how society has groomed us. While this poem is talking about how society is more treated in society, how a woman is treated in society, and the double standards of how women are treated in society. Even in the previous poem, even in the previous poem, even though it's not mentioned, men are not, when they age, they are seen as becoming more wise, becoming more 
grand and more powerful and all these things while a woman is not kissed but in this point when a woman commits adultery it is treated very different to when a male treat is commits adultery so we have to know the way i think these two poems come together is a discussion of how women of women is the, the center is women how women are treated in society how women are viewed in society and how that impacts the impact of that view on how they view themselves because even in this poem even in this poem even though the woman doesn't speak even though the woman doesn't speak in this poem how do you think she felt you think she felt great <laughs> you know what i'm saying you know and she was probably thinking also but i commit adultery with a, another man yet you're not treating this other man the way you're treating me and this was inspired by the biblical story when um jesus um was teaching and teaching and the pharisees came and threw this woman on the floor and was like oh rabbi teacher this person this woman was committing adultery and she was caught in the very 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 act what should we do you know the law we have to stone her and jesus marks on the the sand and he was like he who has no sin cast the first stone and that is kind of hinted here when he said when she said at least when this when the poem states at least until he turned his eyes on us her eyes on her our eyes upon ourselves we walked away still holding stones that we may throw another day given the urge so that is hinted here a little bit <laughs> you know um it's not stated for sure but based on the foundation that this poem was built on we see that this preacher which is probably supposed to be jesus really kind of saves this woman from dying and um i think that these two poems really address two crucial issues in women of women and that cse could easily bring a question when you're comparing these two so that's what we're gonna do stick with today um i we didn't go as in deep with mirror as i would like but next week what we are going to do is going to analyze a stone's throw kind of go a little bit more deep or deep sorry a little deeper into mirror go as deep as we can in stone's throw and then i'm going to create a question and we're going to compare these two poems and write that essay because we have to go back here again still going back here we still have to go back here writing essays so when we finish analyze these two beautiful poems we are going to hopefully next week we are going to write an essay comparing them, or I shouldn't say comparing them, discussing them. Um, so be prepared for that, um, and I'll see you next week. Bye.